And to discuss the political incentives driving ISIL, Max Abrams joins us from Boston now. He is a professor at the Northeastern University there and an expert on terrorism. Max, as always, thanks for joining our broadcast. Thank you. What are your thoughts on ISIL's claims, latest claims, that Kayla Mueller, the American hostage, was actually killed in the airstrikes? And why have we not seen the video of Mueller if, in fact, she was killed? It's a good question. Kayla, Kayla's parents are saying that they're still hopeful she's alive. Uh, unfortunately, I believe that she's probably dead, though I don't believe that Kayla was killed by the Jordanian airstrikes. I think it's much, much more likely, much, much more likely that Islamic State just slaughtered her. She was sent sentenced to death about a year ago. And furthermore, terrorist groups like Islamic State, they're inherently liars. You know, of all the terrorist attacks committed by terrorist groups, only 15% of them are, are claimed, are claimed at all. The vast majority, 85% of all terrorist attacks, go unclaimed. And so we shouldn't turn to terrorist groups as reliable spokespeople uh, in terms of uh, the perpetrators of the attack. So perhaps, Max, they are just now realizing how valuable she would have been, so they're using her uh, sort of, sort of as, a, as a ploy to get um, sentiment and to get reaction. I actually think it was smart, though, for Islamic State to pin the blame on the Jordanians because there's growing backlash, uh, including within the Arab Muslim world against Islamic State for being too brutal. For example, the torching of that Jordanian pilot. A lot of authorities on Islam are saying that that kind of behavior is, uh, is anti-Islamic. And now you have the Jordanians who are ramping up their attacks. The UAE is now providing F-16 to the Jordanians. And I think that more and more the international community, including people within that region, are, are starting to push back against Islamic State. And I think that if it had claimed credit for killing Kayla Mueller, there would have been an even bigger backlash because A, she was a humanitarian worker, she wasn't part of the military, and B, she's a female. Right, and so this is interesting because just a week ago, we did not know how the Jordanians were going to react against uh, King Abdullah and the, and the entire regime for even getting into this in the first place. But now we know this has really um, ignited a, a show of support for King Abdullah, also forced the UAE to, to join back in this coalition. So perhaps these videos are backfiring. I think that they are. Uh, I mean, think back to 2004, when Spain was participating in the occupation of Iraq. And then there were the Madrid train bombings, and Spain would eventually uh, withdraw its troops from Iraq. And it's believed that that withdrawal was due to the terrorist attack. And so a lot of people feared that Jordan would go the same course, that it would, you know, Jordan is one of the four Sunni Arab countries participating in this coalition, and there was the fear that Jordan would use this opportunity to get out of the coalition. But instead, Jordan has done the exact opposite. You're quite right. The Jordanian public has rallied behind the Hashemite kingdom, and they've ramped up their attacks, and uh, I'm very happy to see this. And finally, Max, this anti-ISIL coalition has, has launched more than 2,000 airstrikes. Is there any way to measure just how effective they've been to date? Well, what I could say is that we are killing off a lot of ISIS members, and let's call that the attrition rate. The attrition rate, however, is about equal to the Islamic State recruitment rate. And so it's pretty much a wash in terms of the rate in which we're taking them out versus the rate at which they're coming in. However, increasingly, precisely because there is this backlash against the group, it needs more and more manpower, and it needs more and more funding to occupy these territories. And so what I hope to see is for this backlash to continue and for the U.S.-led coalition to rain down air attacks at a much faster rate. I think together with the U.S. air campaign and the backlash, which might entail some additional fighters on the ground, that combination should prove successful as it, as it has been in the places where those two things have operated together, like in the town of Kobani 
where we have been successful. Max Abrams, thank you. Joining us live from Boston. We appreciate your time and your insight as always.